have your accessions. Maybe if you want to dimension these things, it is very easy, right? You can easily come to where you have dimensions, right? They click on these dimensions and then to use the vertical for the vertical dimensions, the horizontal for the horizontal uh, dimensions, okay? For instance, the horizontal, I select it, I pick the first point, I can pick this as my second point, I can continue to pick, all right? And then I'll have to right click to have my dimensions just like this. Hello, friends, well, welcome to this presentation. At the end of this presentation, we will actually learn how to properly create detailed drawings of this model. But at first, we will look at how to create a connection details like these connections. We will be creating the details of it and other connections details like the base plate successfully. And as well, if you look closely to these connections, you will know that the numbers of both is are four in number. Okay, if you come over here, you notice it's two. So how to increase the numbers of boats on a connections. We also look at that in these presentations. And as well, if you come over here, you will notice that we have an angle ion as a brazen rod. We will learn how to change that successfully. So stay tuned, stay connected. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more advanced lesson of this. If you have any question, also drop it in the comment section. Once again, you are welcome. And let us make progress. So at first I will be removing this or hiding this area for concrete pedestal members. Okay, so what I will do is I will orbit this this way. I do a window to select only the uh, rear force concrete members. Right click and then I will come to where I have I selected to ID. So you are not seeing your yeah, so this is the content of the you know base plate and the anchor boots just like this. Okay, so this is the key. The shaky, right? This one, the shaky. Okay, so at this point now, let me start from how to increase the number of boats here, or you want to increase the diameter of your boat, you can do it as well, right? Okay, so to increase the diameter of the boat, just select any of the boats, right click on it, so it will come up just like this. Okay, so with this now, you can see the diameter of the boat over here, you can increase it from 16 to 20, just like this. Click on apply it, so you can see it be increased successfully. So if you notice, it is even getting clash with this upper. Uh, st uh, stick now, all right. So, click on the okay options. We'll call it that. So, having increased the size of the boat, if you want to increase the number of the boat and arrange the boat the way you want, all right, on this connection. So, what you do is come back here, activate your uh, micros, okay, connections, micros, select the micro, and click on it. So, you have a dialog. So, you have a punch connection dialog just like this. So, in this dialog, you can't able to get to your figure two right there. So, in this figure two, you can't. Give the board a space of 50 millimeters from the end of the plate right there. Okay, so over here, the difference between the first two boards will be 50. You give it a space, you can give it up 80, you give it a space, meaning you needed to two boards up and down, right? A space of 50 again, right? Just like this. Okay, so after which you can click on the apply right here. So you can see you have four number of boards here, yeah, well arranged. So if you follow this uh, details, uh, how I provide all of this. Uh, you know, spacing, you can be able to get this successful. Click on OK option. So that is how to do that. All right. So this method is applicable to every other boat. Okay. I believe that is understood. The next thing is we have an angle ion as a side ground here. Okay. So we wouldn't want that. We need a side ground just like this. So you can double click on this angle ion. After which you come to where your profile name provide a click and then you can navigate, minimize this. You can then select this uh, type of uh, profile. Select it and click on apply it. Okay, to change that so you can see now it's been changed. All right. So for this implying the sag rod, actually the micro doesn't doesn't work with this, right? It doesn't work with this one. Right? When you try to create a sag rod connection, it doesn't work. So what you do is you just have to delete that. Off. Okay. Sorry, I have to undo that. Just select only the sag rod and then delete it. Yes, options just like that. Okay. So that's how to fix that. We make progress at this time. We're going to be looking at the how we can create the connection details. So it is fine that you create connection details to almost all your connections so that when you create your drawings, you can be able to get the details of your drawings successfully. Okay, so what we do here is uh, we have to highlight the connections that we needed details, right? For instance, we needed details for these orange connections, right? So, but if we try to Select so like this on connections, you will notice that uh, uh, this uh, 
polarized connection will also be selected, but we will get them deselected. Okay, so we just have to align everything from here. Okay, so all the connections have been aligned, including the polarized connection. So both the control keys select the polarized connection to deselect them and as well the boot. Just like that, deselect the plate and the boot, as well as the micros. Okay, so that they are all deselected. Now we are left with only the orange connections, as you can see. So at this point, navigate to the steel member and then you see this detailing items manager. This one, just select on it. So you have a dialogue just like this. So once you have a dialogue like this, you come to this place and give it a name. So you can call it any name. You can say detail one, right? Details one, just like this. Okay. So you can click on add right there. So once you click on add, the next thing is you come over here and select objects. The objects you are going to select are the two, the two objects that actually are being connected to the connections. So you so select there. Pick the first so after the and then pick the stash of right there. These are the two objects you are expected to actually uh, select. Then right click. So once you right click, you have this uh, connections uh, box just like this. Okay. At this point, you can see over here the top is also is there, and then you have the front and the left. Okay. So it's going to give us the sections of the top. It's going to give us sections of the front and as well the left. If you want it from the right, you can also you can also uh, activate it. Right. If you want it from the right, you can also activate it. If you want it from the bottom, you can also activate it. If you want it from the back, you can also activate it by clicking on it. You do that successfully, right? But we wouldn't need that. Let's get these three sections and then click on this uh, plus sign to add a 3D view of these connections, all right? So once you add a 3D view of these connections, you will be, that simply means that uh, you will be having something like this. Once when you get to see 3D view, something like this, okay, so you can see something like this. So this is a typical how the steel drawing is being actually arranged successfully for printing successfully, all right? So let's get back to Potter Steel, so I'm trying to show you what you get at the end, all right? So then after we can now click on the uh, close options right here. So we have created a steel uh, details for this uh, connections. The same thing which is supposed to be applicable for this other connections successfully. Like the upper sponge, okay. So you need to print a steel test for the upper sponge as well. You get that selected and then with the control key, make sure you select this. So we wouldn't want to create for that, but we only want it for the average upper sponge successfully. So click here. So you can name this as a detail, detail two, and then uh, detail two, you can add it to the upper just like this so after we click on add right there see the existing detail one is there that is detail two okay so after which you just have to come over here click on the select objects we pick these two objects like this and then right click to place the you know the detail box right there add 3d to it like this after which you can now close this so we have created that detail successfully just like that the next point we'll be creating the left detail is the uh we'll be creating detail for this uh, we can see detail for, for the base plates. Okay, so you have to select all the base plates just like this. Click on details and then add the name of the details to be this base plates just like this. Add it right there. Okay, and then we want to select the members that make up that base plate, which is the stanchions and the plate itself. So let's pick select objects, pick the stanchion, and pick this plate. So we are supposed to pick this tension and this plate. Like this. So we will not have something of this kind. It's like the 3D right there to have the 3D of this plate. Okay. In the drawings that we'll be generating. Okay. So click on the closed options. All right. So the same thing is applicable to the polarized uh, connections. So we can also create details for the polarized connections so that by the time we create drawings so we can have something like this okay this is a click uh, plate isometric view so we can have something like the thickness 12 millimeters right so uh, let's get back and then see how we can create that successfully just like this you can just highlight all of this click on it with a manager give it a name for lines okay then you add right there after being added, just like that, you can't click on the 
select object. So we are going to be selecting the games. This and this. And then I click it's going to show out this and then after which just have to select the plus side and the 3D of that collections. Right? Click on the OK or close options. So the same thing is applicable to this button. Let's not add the then again so we can proceed very fast. Okay, the next thing that we want to show us is uh, how to increase your plate thickness. So if you want to increase any member's plate thickness, just select the plate thickness. Present on the plate. This is uh, 8 millimeter thickness and then fill in the thickness here. Alright, you can be able to change that successfully using that method. I just will show you that. Okay, so at this point, we want to start to create our drawings successfully. If you have any questions, you can always drop it at the comment sections. We want to create a drawings now. We need to get all of this. Uh, all of these uh, members selected, you do a window over it and raise your hand to have them selected just like this. And then you will go to now you have a drawings and report and we come over where you have a perform numbering. Okay, so on that perform numbering, you select on perform numbering the first options and then in this provisions, you click on apply and start numbering. Okay, so you give it some time, it is going to apply it and actually uh, perform the numbering of all the members successfully. You can see numbering completed. Click on OK option. So in the numbering option dialog, click on the apply again before you now close. So like this, we have numbered this. Okay. The next thing we'll be looking at is how you can differentiate between between uh, assembly drawing and uh, single pass drawing. Okay. So for you to do that, you can select this right here. Right click and then come over to uh, where you have uh, come over to where you have uh, Select assembly. Okay, after which you can go still right click again, then show only selected. So you will have this. So this is what is called assembly drawings. Okay, assembly drawing is like this. So once we'll be creating drawing, you should be able to know what is an assembly drawings, right? So like this is an assembly drawings. So how about the single part drawings? As I've selected the bit after, I can right click and say uh, show uh, only selected. So here is the single part drawing. So you can see this is the single part drawing. The previous one is the assembly drawings, okay? Assembly member, okay? And this one is the single part member. Let me not call it drawing because we have not generated it, okay? So, I believe that is understood. Let's get back to show all. Let's like this, okay? So, now we want to start to create the drawings actually. So, the putter, still, you want to create a drawings. Uh, if it is a massive drawings, it is fine you create the drawing based on the members or member by members. What I meant is, as you have, Columns here, you will notice that the details of the external columns of the end columns is different from the details of uh, the intermediate columns, right? Because the intermediate column will be having a uh, polines, just uh, we are doing a get connections in this format. That is, that is what makes the detail of it or the assembly of it different. What am I trying to say? If you select this now, right click, and then you come over to where you have uh, you have a select assembly, and then you right click now to show the assembly of this. You will notice something over here. So show, show, show the selected right there. So this is the assembly of these columns, right? This is the assembly of this column. So if you create an assembly drawing for this column, this is how it's going to look just like this, okay? So uh, so it is quite different. Let's show it is quite different from this one. If you create assembly drawing for this column, you see it is going to be different from this. So for that reason, you can first of all create a, a drawing for your you know end columns. Right, I use it for all the end columns so that you not create too much of drawing that will bring confusions if you are dealing with a massive uh, project. Okay, so then you now come over to the intermediate columns. Like in this uh, particular model, if we want to create a drawing, if we are to create a drawing with this method, we will actually create one drawing for these stations, we create another drawing for these uh, stations. So for the stations, we are creating only two drawings, the ends and the uh, the ends and the what and the intermediate columns. Okay. So this now this to take care of every other columns. Alright. So any detail drawing you have for this, you are going to use it to multiply by the number of the end uh, stations, which is one, two, three, four, to get the whole details. Correct. The same thing applicable for the intermediate stations. Okay. So you multiply by two, which is one here. Yeah? So that is how. Easy, you can create drawing when you are dealing with a massive project. But in a case of a simple project of this kind, you can create all of these drawing at once and then be able to identify them all. Okay, so that is how it actually works successfully. 
So at first, I want us to be creating a sections, a sections along grid line AA. So for us to do that, after we have number this, for us to do that, you will get to where you have view right there, and then you use these two points. This one, so we pick that. So you pick this uh, first point, uh, the end of that grid line A. So you pick that point, take it all the way to this other side. Pick it so you have these sections. So you see over here new, okay? This I can see new right here, new view. So select on that, uh, right click, and the view is already activated. So you can just double click on this black space. See new view name is new view, right? So you can change it to sections one, just like this section one. So you click on apply. It. See it has changed to sections right there. So uh, this is the name. So point. Section one like this. Okay, click on apply it right there. You see there section one. Click on the purple option. So we have created the sections just like this, which we are going to be added to our to our drawing successfully. So we also have all of these sections created just like this. Okay, so let's get back to the 3D. We got our sections. So for the 3D, we really want to uh, color ourselves. We've already gotten it here. We'll be adding it also in the drawings. All right. So at first, let us uh, create uh, the drawings right there. So you have to select all of these members like this, select all of these members like this, and then right click, and then to come to uh, create drawings, okay? So we are going to be creating, uh, creating an assembly drawings, click right there. So this is going to create the total number of 43 drawings, 43 drawings. So now the disadvantage of using this uh, particular method is that Sometimes you may not necessarily know which part of the drawing is created. When you are dealing with massive project, you may not know which part of the drawing is this and this other part is this and how they are linked together. Okay. But if you actually use the first method I explained, you will be able to give it a name. So all of this drawing has been created successfully like this. So go to the drawing manager. So these are all the drawings. Okay. So if you want to view them, you select. The first one and double click on that. So having double click on that is going to create the detail joints, the path maps, and other details uh, dimensions of the joint successfully. So now here is a drawing. So how do you identify which of the drawing is this? Alright. So if you check very well, you will notice that this is the uh, this is the polines. Alright. It should be the polines and if you come over here, you can see the material list. You can see is this the polines. So it, 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 it has created, the program has created both the gate and the polines all together. And so, and they have created a lot of sections here. So you can see many of these things are just sections, 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 which most of the sections should not really be them. So this is all the uh, polines drawings. Created successfully. Okay, so as you can see, session JJ, session H. Alright, so all of these sections, these sections now, maybe belonging to this member. So you have to check carefully to actually see which of the sections and where is the session coming from. Like this is the main member, this one is the main member, and then you can see over here we have section G here. Yeah. Alright, so this is where the little work is, where you can actually. Do some arrangement to be able to get all of these things correctly okay so let's get back to the drawing manager right there. let's check the second drawings you double click right there so this is the first method we'll look at the second method so we compare it and see how easy it is to use the second method to create drawing as well so the drawing is created i don't know this part whether it is the column but let's check it right there. So, if you zoom closely, I've been looking at it very much. You will notice that this is the columns, right? So, this is the columns. You can see over here, this is the share key right there, and this is the plate, right? So, these are the sections of the plate. So, this one you are seeing here consists of all the columns. All the stanchions you have in that model and the sections so you have to now count down 
and see how you can be able to actually uh, edit these drawings successfully. Okay, so here is the material list in terms of the weight, the length, the number of it, right? Like all of the plates, everything is being arranged successfully. So this is the stanchions, all right? So likewise, we get back there, you have other drawings like this one. So this is how the total steel creates drawings for you. Once you actually use the select all method, that is the select all method, meaning you select all the objects or all the members in the in the model, and then you generate drawing, you create drawing like this for you. Okay. So let us treat these drawings but first. We need to get rid of this. Uh, click on yes options okay so here we are now this is our model you cannot create any drawings now again because the program will tell you there's a drawing that exists so double click on this drawings provisions and come to the drawings manager manager you have this so check the if you select that you can be able to use it on the keyboard right and then click on the yes option see that is deleted so you select the rest of that why I'm deleting it is because I want to use the second method to create the drawings. Alright, so all these ones are the default, uh, the, this, the default uh, drawings. Okay, so click on the close options. Yes, options to save that. Then get back to the 3D model. I double click here or we close this window to get back there. Alright, so here we are. So using the second method to create the drawings, you will select this first. Actually, I don't create single part drawings and assembly drawings separately because in the process of creating assembly drawings there is also a single part drawings created okay but i will show us how to create a single part drawing so you just have to select that and right click the come over here to create drawings single part drawings here yeah? so just click right there so part drawing is basically created so if you come over here now see p30 right which is the part drawing double click right there it is a station so close this window and then you come over here you have a pattern just like this, right? So, totally, they normally uh, dimensions uh, the members twice. You can see the dimension up and down, kind of the same level. So, you can actually delete any of the dimensions and proceed using the delete on the keyboard. Works fine, right? So, for this side and this side are the same dimension. So, you can also interrupt that, select this, and delete it. So you have only this dimension. Right, that one is not deleted. Okay. So this is actually how single part drawings looks. Okay, you can click on the border and be, be able to adjust it just like this. Okay. And also you can also yeah, with dimension again, you can pick this, pick this endpoint. Over here, come and pick this other endpoint. And then you place it to have their dimensions just like this okay also if you come over here you also have uh, another drawing that is showing the sections of some hidden elements or members you can move this like this so if you double click on this border it will take you to viewport property editor in this viewport property editor you can keep the drawing again so you can see the part 13 front okay so you can just call it steel columns you call it a stick clothes just like this you can also copy these things since the name is already given as this as starting font you can copy it and come to your app label come over here and paste it here so that once you click on apply it will actually uh, reflect okay so you click on the location outside meaning outside this boundary okay and then for the text you have to use this font and this Okay, area okay so you can click on the apply it now so you can click on apply now you see it coming up stay follow scale okay one is to 20 right so if this if this uh guide to text is too big you can also change it you come to text settings change over here so i see text height then six so you can change it to four all right click on the okay right there and then over here just apply we reduce just like this so here is for the scale you also change it to four just like this, click on OK options and then you apply it right there. You have that, okay? So this is how you can be able to actually edit this drawing successfully.
So this is a single part drawing we created, right? So now, with this drawing created just like this, we can proceed to create the sections that we actually cut, right? Right in these provisions. Okay, so you can come to where you have micros. Um, if you come here, you see the connection details micros here, this one. You see the connection details micros here. So if you click on this now, it's not going to create the drawings. Before you can be able to create the drawings, you have to activate the 3D view. So you have to create a view for this. So click on create a view. So you can see the 3D here. All right. So you just have to select the 3D right here. Right click and then click on create a view. It has created a view just like this. So all in this sheet. Okay. You come over here, you can see your material list. And I want to always use this to explain almost the properties for us. So you can see all the connections. Everything being packed just like this. Okay. So this is the connections that we actually have right there. So now with this, with this, like this, you can just select the, you know, the connections, uh, the connection sections right there and click on this connection detail. So once you click on this connection detail, it's going to create a direct drawings successfully. So these are the drawings, okay? So this is for the one, just as I've said earlier. So you can see the top and then this is the section front to front like this. All right, so over here, this is the 3D. So you can, and well, be able to adjust all of this so you can adjust this like you can bring it more closer if you move your cursor along this gray line you can see a cursor change so you can just bring it closer like this arranging it so you add it to your drawing successfully like this something of that kind so this is for this detail one this one is for the detail to the artist so you can see it here artist well leveled okay just like this, it's a 3D of the artist. Okay, so for this one, this is the best place. Okay, so here is the 3D the way it looks. You can rearrange this by taking this up out here, just like this. Take this up here, just like that. So this is 500 and 500 column sections right here. So this is the plate 10. Okay, here is the 3D of it. You can see, okay, and this is the plan of it. Okay, so if you come over here, this is the section front of front for the polines. All right, just as I said earlier, you can always adjust this to your test. Okay. All right, this is the 3D of that as well. Okay, so over here, if you check very well, you see it is been detailed for the polines. You can see it named polines. Okay, so you can also bring in your sections. This is a section right click and create sections. So you have your sections just like this. Okay. So after having your sections, maybe if you want to dimension these things, it is very easy. Alright? You can easily come to where you have dimensions. Right there, click on these dimensions. And then to use the vertical for the vertical dimensions, the horizontal for the horizontal uh, dimensions. Okay. For instance, the horizontal, I select it. I pick the first point. I can pick this as my second point. I can continue to pick. Alright. And then I'll have so right click to add my dimension just like this okay for the vertical i'll have to pick the vertical dimension which is this one right and then i'll pick from this point and then i'll take it to this end point like this i'll go up and pick the green lines right there okay so i can pick the height of this the topmost height just like this right click to place that so you now see we have this okay so if for instance you want a name like you want to generate the detail like the name of this uh, incline the the wife or incline beam after this one what you just need to do is you get to select it and then you come to where you have this click on that you will notice that it is not actually showing us so it's supposed to show us but what we do is we right click on it to create this uh, to bring up this frame annotation settings so in this frame annotation setting you have to select this profile name and pull it to this provisions profile name okay so since we now have the profile name here click on the apply it and okay so let's do that again so select this now and click on this again you see it has given us the sections right there okay so this is ukb 127 and the rest of that okay so the same thing is applicable to the columns now since we have pulled out the profile name you can just click on this it's going to give us the sections just like this, 203, right, by 204, by 7. Okay, so 
if something is applicable to every other members here, if you want to create uh, that kind of uh, sections name, for this, you can also do it as well. Okay, so this is basically the proper way of creating uh, state sections, drawings in a uh, uh, portal. Did portal stay successfully? All right, so this member now is just a single part drawing, so we are going to close this right away. So, having closed that, we will also close the uh, drawing models. So, click here to close that to get to this uh, uh, interface just like this. So, this time around, we will be considering the assembly drawings. We can create an assembly drawing successfully. Okay, so uh, we will select this one and then we right click and then come to uh, select assembly. So, so this are uh, all of the assembly just as I've uh, told you that uh, showed us uh, previously. Okay, so I've been getting all of that selected, you right click, and this is the end columns because this is the second method of uh, creating drawing we will be considering right away now. Okay, so uh, we'll come to create drawings and then assembly drawings, this one like this. Then it's going to create a drawing which that has been done successfully. If you go to the uh, drawing manager right here, double click right there, you see this drawing here. So you can now right click and then you can be able to rename this right. Can be able to rename this if you select that you come over here see rename here so if you click here so you can rename this as a end column and uh so sorry you can rename it as end like this and columns okay so you know it is different from the middle one right so we are creating only this one for all the end columns okay click on it okay options so once you look see it here yeah, you'll be able to know where the column belongs okay that is the difference between this method and this other one so you don't click right there and see the content of this you need to save uh, okay click on yes to save that okay so this is going to create and take us to the drawing uh, interface let's close this uh, drawing manager dialog and then we have uh, drawings for that extension okay just like this okay so you can see the drawings at the section a all the sections are from this original uh drawings here okay so you can see over there we have section a we have section b we have section b d right there and then we have section g and then we have section c and e even up to section f right there okay so all of these sections are being cut and most of these ones you see are the sections you can see section f here is basically on the base plate so it doesn't have any much work to do you can see all of these different are properly you know details what you just need to do you can just have to uh, dimensions and make it more properly from here you can see the pack mark of the stickner right here the pack mark one slash six it's been you know uh dimension here or part fabrication part is been dimensions just like this okay so this is the base plate and the anchor holes you can see 23 diameter anchor holes so this is how it normally uh, looks when you create a drawing so with this you wouldn't want you wouldn't even have to do any much editing okay the material list is also here for all of the plates which you can see okay so this is uh, the assembly drawing for the end column so you have to save this okay so click on the close to close this window and save that successfully we we'll close this drawing models and get back to the main interface okay so that is it for this one so for the middle or intermediate uh, uh, stations you can just select that you may not necessarily need to select assembly but once you get this selected and then right click come over to drawings you will be able to create assembly drawings you just click right there okay so it has created assembly drawings successfully over to drawings manager and then you see it here so this is going to be an intermediate column so you can rename that so so as to be able to know it okay so it's going to be middle let me use middle column middle column like this okay so once you see it you know the location of it Okay, which is what differentiates this method from this other method that you select the whole structure and then carry out the uh, drawing. Okay, so you double click right there and then uh, click on the yes option to save that. So this is also going to create a drawings. Okay, let's close this window and then we have this, okay, which is somehow similar to this other one. But the difference is that the uh, get connections here is in a double format, okay. So we have our drawings just like this. So these two drawings now we cut out for every other stations, okay, that are at the end and as well in the middle successfully. Okay, so we click on the closed options right there and then yes options. 
and then we get back to the uh, drawing model here. Okay, so using the same process, uh, we can also create for the you know, beam rafter successfully, create for the beam rafter as well, end and middle. Okay, so let me create this again. So I will write a great and assembly drawings. Alright, so drawing is created. Let me click right there and then come over here to rename it as a beam rafter. Okay. After just like this, click on the OK options. You don't click right there to check the BMPS option. Close this window again. So, here is the beam after, right? So, over here, you can see this is just like a single pack drawing. Okay, so this is just like a single pack drawing. So, that what I said earlier that most of the times. That uh, most of the time, once you create your assembly drawings, you notice that the single pad drawings are also created. So, this is the single pad drawing so that uh, are inclined uh, the rafter. Okay, all right. So, these are the both permissions. Okay, so let's save this as well, just like this. So, with this method, you can be able to create even up to your polarize. Okay, if you want to create for polarize, you just pick one of these polarize, just like this, one of these, and you create for this. So the information you have here, you will use it for other polarize. Okay, the same thing applicable to the gate. Uh, select one of the gates like this and create your drawings. So any information you have here, use it to multiply the number of it over here. All right. So that is how the drawing is properly created. So that's it. So let us get back to the drawing module. And then let's see how we can send these drawings to AutoCAD. Alright, so we want to export these drawings to AutoCAD. You just have to select it like this and come to export. You can see the SF export here. Alright, the SF export. Rather, if you want to print it here, you can actually print it through these provisions. Alright, but before you export it to AutoCAD, you should be able to make sure that you have done some editing on the drawings over here. You are necessary. You do it like if you check very well, you notice that most of these sections doesn't have uh, sections like it doesn't have scales. Okay, all right, you know, all your drawings are supposed to be scale. So, all these drawings are actually scale, it's just that the scales are hidden. So, what you just need to do that the scales is select the borderline of any of the drawings, double click on it, and then you have a viewport property dialog. So, when you use this viewport property dialog, you can be able to assign any name to this. So, for here, you are having a P uh, part number six. Okay, so you can also add. A name to it, maybe you call it Steve now. Okay, so you can actually add a name like Steve now. Steve. Okay. Steve now, just like this. Okay, so come to where you have level settings over here. And you bring it outside of this uh, of this boundary. Okay, you put it, bring it outside by clicking these provisions. Then come to this place and write a text. So for the text font, you can change it to three. So that might be that bogus, right? Click on the OK options, and then come to where you have scaling text. You activate that as well, and then make it a uh, two right there. Okay, so after we click on the OK right there, click on apply it right there. So you have something like this. You can see uh, pack number six font stiffener. Okay, so this is how you will be able to set out your scaling. So this is just the simple work you'll be doing to all of these drawings to be able to have your scaling and the names. Right accordingly, so after having them, yeah, you think it is not dimension, you also dimensions, which is the editing you're supposed to carry out here. So, after you're done with that, right, you can now start sending the drawings to AutoCAD, okay, so that you can be able to finish it up successfully. All right, so, um, let's close this right away. Let's, yes, options, and then let's go to the drawing models and then select this first one. After you get that selected, you can export right there. Click on export. So it will take you to the uh, drive, to your drive. Yeah, you want to save the drawings. So let me save it inside the document. So inside this document, I will just have to save it directly right there. Click on the OK right there. So you see the drawings saving right there inside the document. All right. So it's going to actually take some seconds to save successfully. So you can see the export 
it's not successfully because they don't write that. Okay, so if we should get back to a uh, document to check that successfully. So let's navigate to the document so we can check that. Okay, so to document right there. And what do I see? Here is the drawing P, right? P30, but you can create a folder, right? Yeah, if you want to save again, you save it in that folder and call it still work. Just like this. All right, then remove this one inside of this folder, like this. Still work folder, so it will create idea. So with this now, you can be able to open it in AutoCAD. All right, so let's wait for AutoCAD to load successfully. So here is drawings in AutoCAD. So having it here like this in AutoCAD, you can now do some little editing, arrange it, and then put it in your drawing sheet template for printing successfully so the same thing applicable to every other ones okay for instance i want to wait send this to dsf I'll select that which is the end column and then i will click on export so we can select multiple of that all right and then click on export and so we navigate to the documents right here and then the still works for that we just you know create it because okay so you can see all of the selected works is actually exporting and it is exported successfully because the done options there so we wouldn't have any other ones again because all is being exported so if you get to the folder right there you can see all the drawings here okay and quickly click on that and then open it in AutoCAD just like this. So it's big open. So here is the choice in AutoCAD. Okay, so with this, you can carry out any arrangement for the arrangement and print out your drawing successfully. So this will bring us to the end of this uh, presentation. And we have successfully uh, shown us how we can be able to print drawings uh, successfully from a uh, uh, how we can create drawing from Protest T successfully. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the, at the comment sections. So stay tuned, stay connected, and see you in the next presentations. Bye for now.